Hi everyone, I'm Paul, an engineer here at Anai, and welcome to our YouTube channel where you can learn tips and tricks to help you design, validate, and test products quicker and more effectively. In this series, we'll go through multiple test and measurement topics from using different languages like LabVIEW, Python, and C-Sharp to operate test instruments, to automating manual processes, and enabling data analytics. Today, I have Daniel, back from the last episode, who is an AE here at NI and who will be helping to add data acquisition Python portion to the measurement link developer. So just a quick recap, uh, measurement link developer is a new solution from NI that helps with going from interactive to automated process for validation quickly with some of the features of measurement link developer are uh, third party uh, instrument support, Python GUI interface, and then you can mix and match uh, programming languages and much more. So welcome Daniel back to this show. Thanks for having me back, Paul. So, what do we, so which data acquisition unit are we adding today? Today we're adding the PXIE 4309. Uh, that's one of my favorite decks. So, and then uh, how about you give us a quick recap of your Python code and then uh, show me what you got new. Sure. So this is kind of a recap of last time. So this is the third party power supply driver. Essentially I downloaded a driver, a C-based driver from the NI website, wrapped it, in Python using C types and created some basic functionality essentially to set the supply voltage, current limit, and to read back the output voltage and current draw as well. Yeah. In the top level code, once again to recap kind of the template that NI provides with measurement link, at the top we have some measurement information and service information where you provide display name to the GUI, some basic revision information, and a link to the GUI itself via a path. This is where we outline the inputs and outputs from the Python code to the GUI. So where you see configuration is where you're going to have your inputs. And so for the data acquisition, I added acquisition mode and acquisition time. Mm -hmm. And on the output side, I added DAC voltage, current, uh, calculated power, and some information for displaying a graph. In the meat of the code, once again, we're using the ZMQ library to send data using data sockets between the host and the DUT. We outlined a few stress tests. And for the data acquisition stuff, I downloaded the Python driver uh, for NIDACMX mm -hmm. and was able to quickly implement a way to just um, acquire information from one channel. Yeah, OK. And in the main, we're just calling some of the power supply uh, methods that I developed before. And so that's pretty much my Python code. Awesome. And then uh, what are you reading on your data acquisition? I'm just curious. Right now, it's hooked up to the 3.3 rail of the Raspberry Pi. So that's what we'll be looking at. OK, awesome. OK, so let's integrate with Measurement Link Developer. So the first part is my favorite part, is build this uh, UI interface. So let's open the UI builder and um, start a new project, a new file. And then how about this time you pick out three things that you want to insert in your visual interface and walk us through it. Sure. First thing I'm going to do is drop a numeric control. Oh, I forgot to select my Python code. This allows you to auto detect uh, the parameters that you've selected. Man, I love that feature. I love how you define it once and you can just select all your inputs and outputs like that. Yeah. In this case, I'm going to select the graph. Nice and easy. And then I'm going to add a string control for the stress test. Everything's auto-aligned, so it's super easy to make a really functional GUI in a couple of seconds. Great. Thanks for showing this. So for our time, we obviously pre-built our visual interface. Uh, we added some new things inside. So again, we're using Instrument Studio to run it. Again, the video is available for anyone that wants to check it out. Um, it's recorded and there'll be a link below. But this interface looks good. How about you tell us what you have new? Sure. On the left-hand side, as in the previous video, we have the power supply settings. allows you to set your supply voltage and uh, your current limit. I added these DAC settings for the 4309. Uh, allows you to have a Boolean for using timed acquisition and allows you to set the acquisition time. Yeah. Down, down here, we have an input for uh, the test settings. allows you to select which stress test you're running. In this case, we'll be running stress test 2 again. So that's where you uh, enable a CPU load on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, and then we can kind of see what the outputs look like. Uh, for the outputs, we added the voltage current calculated power for that 3.3 rail, and then we added this handy-dandy graph 
to look at um, the voltage over time. Ah, some visual interface, I like it. Some new additions, so let's run it. Let's see how it looks. Tell me how the data looks. Let's take a look. On the outputs, we're seeing a voltage of 4.99, which is very close to what we requested, so that looks great. Uh, the current draw is about 0.3 amps. Calculated power is about 1.5 watts. Uh, on the DUT side, we're seeing an elevated CPU usage, as you would expect in a stress test. Uh, slightly elevated temperature and the revision information here. And for the DAC, since we're measuring that 3.3 rail, we're seeing something really close to that. Um, and our graph looks like the voltage is pretty close to 3.3 the entire time. Hey, uh, so Daniel, I mean, you're looking natural at this now. You look like a certified measurement link developer. So how about you show me today how to do automation through Testan and walk me through that? Absolutely. So I'm going to open up Testan here. And the great thing about measurement link is it gives you this additional step in the insertion palette. Measurement, nice and easy. I'm going to right click insert step. So that's kind of the code that we just ran. Once I select it down here, it'll pop up all the inputs and outputs that we defined in the code. Man, I love that part. It's so fast to go to automation and like literally takes less than a minute, right? Yeah. I'm going to select all these checkboxes to log all the data. This is a handy dandy feature so that you don't really have to define a lot of other things to, to log. And then I'm going to add a quick little sweep here. Oh, living on the edge today. Adding more features, more steps, huh? Yeah. So I wanted to make sure I could run a few different stress tests. Let's change this to a string. So you're adding a you're going to run this multiple times, so the stress test? Yeah, I'm going to loop across stress test one uh -huh. and stress test two. So stress test one is uh, the basic configuration for the Raspberry Pi. OK. Pretty much an idle state. And stress test two is that CPU load. Last step here. Let's pull that variable that we created. Let's hit run, see what happens. You know, that's another great feature of a test stand. It's so easy to change your steps and, and uh, change your sequences, right? Yeah, I think we're able to run a basic automated script in you know, just a couple of minutes. I know, that's pretty sweet. All right, how's the data looking? Let's take a look at the data. So this first section is where we ran stress test one. This is the idle configuration for the Raspberry Pi. Yep. So as you can see, the voltage is about 4.99 as expected. Current draw of 2 point, or 0 0.27. You can see a slightly lower CPU usage. And the 3.3 rails, close to 3.3 as you would expect. For stress test two, this is a CPU load. Once again, output voltage pretty close to five. We're seeing that elevated CPU usage as you would expect. Slightly elevated temperature. And the 3.3 rail is also the same. Everything's looking great. Nice. Hey, this system is coming along. So what do you think overall doing this for the second time? Do you get it easier? What's your, what's your input on this? Uh, I think, one, making the GUI is really use, uh, very easy using the GUI editor. Yeah. And then going to automation uh, was a one-step process. And using test stand as your sequencer is, is awesome. Hey, this was fantastic. Thanks for being back on the show, and thanks for showing the new additions. We hope you enjoyed today's video, so please don't forget to drop a like and hit subscribe to keep learning more tips and tricks, and see you next time.